This is a demonstration of the process of using the zonal statistics tool in ArcGIS to find the average value of some worldwide variable um, in gridded format and find the averages for any um, configuration or number of what are called zones um, across the world latitude zones, longitude zones, continental, non-continental, etc. The details of this will be clear when the, uh, when the example is shown. So, the uh, so flash drive um, with this project on it um, contains the following information. It has um, a folder which contains a number of shapefiles which were created and or used in the process of building up the zonal data set and they're worth saving but ne aren't necessary. An empty folder um, in which we'll store the zonal averages for temperature for September 1963. Um, another shapefile, a, a collection of shapefiles. One shows the coastal regions, the continental regions, and the ocean regions um, of the Earth based on the parameters for this uh, project. Um, a copy of the weather and climate toolkit for convenience and the uh, a shapefile containing polygons representing the 15 zones of the world and finally um, the actual temperature data itself from 1880 until relatively recently both in zip format just for uh, backup and then the uh, unpacked format. First step is to use the Weather and Climate Toolkit and uh, track down this great compendium of data um, and we'll browse, I've already browsed to the uh, flash drive where this is, it's called E at the moment. List the files and there's the particular file. You can double click on it or say load. We discover that temperature anomaly, the um, average monthly temperature the difference of the average monthly temperature from the um, average over a reference period um, is the only variable, the reference period 1951 to 1980. So you can look at the differences. Um, and these are the, the months, and really they're keyed to uh, mid-month. I promised that we would do September 1963. And uh, there it is. And we can load it. And uh, I'll move this out of the way momentarily this one too. In the Weather and time Climate Toolkit, there's the uh, world, um, and fairly boring at this time, uh, fairly consistent, not much deviation except in a few regions. Um, so that's September 63. Um, in order for this data to be usable in ArcGIS, um, we need to go to the Data Selector window and ask for Export. And uh, there's a number of choices to make. Most are easy. One is a little tricky. Um, we would like to use an ESRI ASCII grid. ESRI is the company that makes ArcGIS, and therefore this format is compatible with ArcMap. We'll ask for next. We only have one choice of variable. Um, we would like to not use the viewer window to control our export, but rather the spatial filter, which is shown here by default the whole world pole to pole and west to west, east to east, um, is the spatial extent we want. Um, we're not going to exclude any values, the highest or the lowest. We're going to keep all the values. Um, we're going to take the native um, grid size and, um, and, and um, units that go with the data set. Um, review, which we did everything right, no need to review really. And uh, we let it process and it quickly has generated a, uh, a file, two actually, which we can look at. And uh, there they are. And uh, 167 kilobytes is, or 166 in some cases, is the num uh, represents the, uh, the size of the file that has one uh, two by two, uh, has, has the whole world broken into two degree by two degree cells with a value in each one. Um, the PRJ file, um, defines the georeferencing system so that it can be viewed. So now that data set is ready for September 1963. Additionally, or now to move on 
to ArcMap where the computation of zonal statistics will be done, we can add a data set and what we want is to add all the zones and uh, there they are. Use the identify tool to show that's the, the green flashing is the uh, northern mid-latitude oceans, northern mid-latitude continentals, northern mid-latitude well, my aim isn't very good. Northern mid-latitude um, coastal. So that's the, uh, each of those are the zones. If we look in the attribute table, we see that they're numbered in the field object ID, very important, 1 through 15, and each of those is a unique value. Um, close that. Um, now, those are the zones. The data we want to summarize is September 63 for the Frankie Valley fans, Four Seasons. And uh, there it is. And we saw the value momentarily, not to worry. Um, the, uh, the polygons for zones are on top. And you'll notice that the, uh, the colors um, are not pretty. Um, by loading here, we've just, same values. Every cell is the same value. It's the same data set. It's just um, symbolized in a relatively bland um, grayscale. That's, we don't care. We don't need to recolorize it or anything. Um, and these places where you can see through are, are um, no data places, places with no data. So next, what uh, needs to be done is uh, one needs to find the zonal statistics um, so that we can find the average of all these temperatures in each of the 15 zones. So we search for tools, ask for zonal statistics, um, spatial analyst, um, you may have to, uh, depending on your where you're working, you may have to go to Customize, Extensions, and turn on the Spatial Analyst tool. Um, that may or may not be turned on by default. And we want to use spatial zonal statistics as table. We don't want to just make another map which for visualization. We want this to be um, come out as numbers, um, average values, count of cells and stuff. So we'll pick that. And uh, hopefully, in a moment, um, the dialog box will open up. First time one opens the dialog box for a uh, opens the dialog box, it loads pretty slowly. So we'll have to give it a give it a little time to catch up with us. I'll give it another double click at the risk of of confusing it. So we should see a zonal statistics as table soon. Um, it takes a long time to load the tool um, for the first instance. Um, once the tool is loaded, it, it works um, more quickly. The first time executing the tool is also slow. So let's just uh, wait for that tool to show up, which I assume it will momentarily. I don't know what its, uh, what its issue is. Once the tool is loaded, um, we'll have a dialog box which will uh, ask us for the file that contains the zones, which is this one, and the data to be summarized in e by each of those zones um, over here. So we'll go ahead and, uh, and do that. And uh, get this tool loaded up momentarily. Um, I did see a a progress bar, so I'm hoping that it comes around shortly. I'm running out of things to say. Um, the answer will be a table, and uh, we'll see it in a moment. I'm going to turn off, I'm going to pause the uh, Cam Studio momentarily. Finally got the dialog box, continuing ahead. Input raster, the feature zone data. So the zones are that, the uh, field that identifies each of the zones is object ID 1 through 15. have to use a copy of the attribute table to find out what that translates to. The raster to be summarized is that one. And uh, the output table, we're going to let go to Never Never Land, um, but we need to, um, one needs to grab the data out of it and slap it into a spreadsheet for use um, 
um, before you turn the computer off or before you run the program again because it'll either be overwritten or deleted when the when the uh, computer turns off so now we'll say okay and uh, it will also be a relatively slow um, process the first time the, the this tool gets run um, seems to take quite a long time um, hopefully that's not a, a problem right there um, again and figure out what my uh, malfunction was and it finally uh, came back to me um, at the uh, bottom of the list there's a table it looks like a little empty spreadsheet as a icon and uh, it went who knows where but you can right click on it and ask for open and uh, this is the table that was generated for object ID 1 through 15, which is each of the 15 zones, um, it tells us that within zone 12, that must be, I, I might guess, um, um, tropics, oceans, um, and there were 3,386 cells. It's important to emphasize that this is a very large number. Even the smaller ones are still large numbers. 3,386 cells. Um, and the average, um, or the minimum and the maximum, and the uh, mean is this, 0 0.06. So across all of the cells um, that fall within this particular zone, wild guess is uh, oceans in the tropics, the uh, deviation was 0 0.067 um, degrees um, centigrade. Um, whatever object one was, whatever that zone, there were 395, uh, 94 cells in that zone, and uh, the actual, the mean was, um, was quite on the warm side, as, as was this. So, best thing to do then is to just um, copy these values, and, uh, and one way to, to do that conveniently is to say export export these values to uh, what's called a DBF output table which can then be imported into Excel um, so that for the for the convenience and uh, how you organize uh, an Excel spreadsheet is uh, is up to you it'll be 45 years January July so there'll be 90 tables like this and um, need to put some thought into how this table can be uh, be arranged. If you just want to grab, you know, for each of these values, just grab the mean and paste into a, and, you know, copy the mean into a spread. Well, I guess you could probably um, copy the mean into a spreadsheet. So there's various ways, but this is the, uh, the GIS side of that. So that's the uh, whole presentation. That gets one whole month in uh, 